Hi everyone, this is Greg here and welcome to Just A Meme podcast where we chat about the future of making money on the web. Today we have Will and Dulce joining us from Immerse Space where they are building a truly decentralized metaverse. Welcome guys. Thanks Greg, really excited. Hey, Thank you. Um, so uh, jumping right into the questions, uh, tell us a bit about yourselves and your journey so far, I'd be interested to hear. <laughs> Will, yeah, well, you know, our team, we originally met, um, I don't know, three years ago at a hackathon uh, in Silicon Valley. Yeah. Um, we were, uh, it was for, what did they call it back then? It was before they called it Immersive Web. It was a web, uh, WebXR Weekly or, or the WebXR Meetup, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, the WebXR Meetup, which is a confusing term. Uh, XR is doesn't have an official definition. Uh, you can kind of think of it as meaning extended reality, but I found out at one of those meetups, the secret is that they took the VR for virtual reality and the AR for augmented reality and stacked them on top of each other. And so that looks kind of like an X, we'll call it that. Okay, interesting uh, <laughs> beginning. <laughs> <laughs> they, also, they also like to call, say it's that variable. The X is a variable, you know, uh, you can, so it can any be anything. Reality. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> very uh, meta. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we met at a hackathon and we, we built a uh, battle royale melee game um, called Ours Attacks. And we did it over a weekend and we actually won the hackathon. And uh, Will and Quinn like just did this amazing configuration to get multiple uh, devices all working at the same time. So we had um, uh, people in Magic Leaps, we had people in uh, uh, mobile devices, on desktop, in VR headsets, all playing this Battle Royale melee game um, on WebXR. Wow, that's that's quite that's quite something in a weekend, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're definitely standing on the shoulders of giants of open source projects like A-Frame, uh, which is uh, from Mozilla, a, uh, a framework for building immersive web experiences without needing a whole lot of advanced coding knowledge. Uh, but one of the really unique things we did in this project was we had a different mode of play depending on what kind of device you were coming in on. So if you were on a, a phone with augmented reality capabilities like an iPhone, uh, your phone would be a, a magic window portal into this world. Uh, and you would be represented by one of the, the Martians from Mars Attacks. Uh, and you would be flying around in the sky by physically moving your phone around. Then wow. if you were in virtual reality, you would be on the ground in this world, immersed, and you would be a, a government G-man. Uh, and so you're on the ground shooting up at these Martians that are people's phones in the same room as you. Uh, and then the third mode of play, if you had just a regular laptop uh, or a phone without AR, you got this top-down mini-map view, and you could help or hurt either side, depending on who you wanted to ally with, so, with some superpowers that you could activate on the map. Uh, and so we had this chaotic gameplay experience with people <laughs> standing here in virtual reality pointing up and then people over there moving their phones around and like ducking under tables to try and get the right angle to attack and then others on their laptop changing the tide of battle. It was really fun. That sounds mental. It, <laughs> it was sounds a great. lot of fun. <laughs> I actually did like a, a wine and cheese meetup uh, with a group of people here in Los Angeles and we all played the game and we were playing for hours and laughing and having a ball and I still have people... Yeah contacting me asking me where is this game um why why did it go away let's bring it back yeah <laughs> so so why haven't you brought it back actually that's let's dive into that <laughs> like, maybe we will <laughs> yeah maybe we will exactly okay well we'll, we'll keep that for the uh, future part um and uh where does the kind of intersection with like crypto. I mean, we, we've met through Grant for the Web a forum, which is a crypto based thing for anyone who's listening who doesn't know. Um, yeah, how, how did you guys get into like the crypto world or was this the first kind of exposure you had to it? You know, it, it's kind of roundabout. It went first through decentralization in general. And that after that experience, um, I learned about the, the decentralized social network standard called ActivityPub, uh, and the first big platform on there is called Mastodon, which is an application that's similar in experience to Twitter, like microblogging. You send short notes, and you make friends, and you share each other's posts. Uh, but unlike Twitter, 
it is run not on one big centralized service, but on thousands of individual services that are all interconnected using a standard protocol. Um, so it's, it's like this, uh, you know, how many times have you met someone and you want to connect with them and then you have to go through this dance where you're like, oh, hey, what's your Twitter? And they say, oh, no, I don't have Twitter. What's your Facebook? And then you say, oh, I don't use Facebook. What about Instagram? And like, you know, it's just awkward. It goes on forever and maybe you never even find something to connect on. Uh, and this is something we've gotten used to, but it's really we shouldn't be like it's a terrible situation that we're all separated out in these walls gardens. I like to compare it to email where imagine if you wanted to email someone and you're like, hey, what's your Gmail? And they said, oh, no, I have Yahoo Mail, so we can't email each other. Yeah, I get some cert. We, we would never stand for, for that ridiculous walling, but we do it in social media. Uh, and so this activity pub and Mastodon, what they're doing is, is proving that it's not a technological limitation. Uh, you know, email is way older than social media, and they've always had that interconnectivity. Yeah. Uh, and now we have like an officially standardized um, standard from the World Wide Web Consortium. That's what the activity pub refers to, which is a way of having that interconnectivity between social media networks. And so I got involved in that with Mastodon. I found a particular instance, we call it, as like one of the individual little communities in the network that is cooperatively owned and operated called social.coop where to fund it, we all pay a small monthly fee based on what we can afford that pays for the server costs and whatnot. Uh, and then in exchange for that, we are all equal owners in this platform. And if we need to make decisions about how we're going to run it or moderation, we do that democratically uh, by voting. Okay, wow. No, no, I haven't come across it before actually. It's uh, interesting because we, uh, we ourselves are building a social network. Um, so it's it's always good to find new stuff, especially in the decentralized sphere where you can build, like you say, stand on top of giants and uh, hopefully build out the ecosystem a bit more. So definitely check that out. Yeah, yeah, it's called Mastodon. It's, it's, uh, okay. it's a really interesting community. Uh, so I was on Mastodon uh, just making random posts one day and thinking about the immersive web uh, and this platform called Hubs, which is made by Mozilla, the makers of Firefox which allows, it's a, an immersive web hangout social platform where you can come in with a 3D avatar and chat uh, and visit with people who are in there in virtual reality or in there on their computers or their phones, kind of like our ours attacks project. Uh, and I just posted one day randomly, saying, you know, if we took the Hubs platform and we mixed it with Mastodon for the decentralization, wouldn't that technically make the metaverse? <laughs> yeah, and then I started, I started thinking, I was like, wait a minute, this actually could work. <laughs> it's really, really elegant and uh, very smart the way that Will has put that together on Emmerspace. And it actually was very mind blowing to me the first time I saw it, because I didn't think that that existed on the web at all. And um, when he showed me how easy it was to connect and jump in and out of different hub spaces with friends and and be in touch. Um, it was just very mind blowing to me. So yeah. Wow. And um, okay, so that, that's so you came at it from like a probably a, a more decentralized standpoint rather than what I've usually heard on this, which is <laughs> Bitcoin was skyrocketed. No, I got in, <laughs> lost oh, it uh, all. <laughs> yeah. So the path to to the crypto side of it is. <laughs> Even more securitous, I guess. So I started building this. And so, you know, we have like the foundation of Emmer's space, which is the idea that you can have a virtual world that you set up and run on your own servers, but it's interconnected with other virtual worlds that other people set up. And you can visit someone else's virtual world, make a friend there, uh, and then have a decentralized friends list that shows you where people are throughout the metaverse and give you links to join them. And I started on that, but didn't have like a big picture direction for it other than as just like a like a tech demo, an idea. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I came across this grant for the web project where they introduced me to this brand new idea of changing how we monetize web content to get away from yep. advertising. Uh, and I guess your listeners probably know a lot about this already, but the basic idea is you, um, instead of having a platform middleman, like say if you're a YouTube creator, you make your content, you post it to YouTube, YouTube then takes a cut of the money that you've earned with the content that you made. And they also get a high level of control over you and your content and decisions you get to make with it in the future. Like uh, they could just one day cut you off from monetization. And if that's your income stream, they can just cut off your income with 
no explanation and very little or no recourse. Uh, and what web monetization offers is cutting out the middleman, at least the way that I see it as like the primary benefit. And that you're, if you're a content creator, the people who are your customers, your viewers, they're able to pay you directly through another web standard, kind of like how ActivityPub is the web standard that's decentralizing our social media. Web monetization is a web standard for uh, decentralizing and cutting the middleman out of payments. Mm. Uh, and that excited me in combination with the idea of, of breaking down the centralized platforms of social media, but also breaking down then and giving economic democracy to the content creators to be truly in charge of the income that they're generating and the content they're creating. Uh, and when they're running their own Emmer's space decentralized social net network node, there's no one that can tell them you can't do that content anymore or we want you to do it a different way. Um, like little side, like uh, so my wife it does uh, food and nutrition and uh, recipe blog. Uh, and a lot of her marketing is done through Instagram. Uh, which yep. is another centralized tech platform. Uh, and they uh, have algorithms that decide who gets to see your content and who doesn't when you post it on Instagram. And it's all opaque and unaccountable, so nobody knows for sure. But the general feeling in the community is that whenever they introduce a new feature, uh, like when they started doing Insta stories, that they would reward people who were publishing Insta story content by also showing their standard content more and punish people who weren't doing this type of con the doing Insta story content by showing people their regular content less. Yeah. And so it gave Instagram had this control over how they were creating content now, content creators who are on Instagram, uh, and not just what content they were creating. Uh, and so, you know, back to to our idea, you know, we're giving you this independence in how you're creating your content. And then web monetization also gives you independence in uh, control over your monetary flow and not having to depend on uh, a centralized service that could take it away from you or change their algorithms and suddenly change your income by a great amount. And okay. how we got to crypto actually mm -hmm. uh, was a surprise. I did not realize it had anything to do with crypto when I read all of the materials for the grant and applied for it. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't until later uh, signing up for the service that I realized, oh, okay, act underneath all this, the way that it's running is through a crypto network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, like I said, that's, I think it's an unusual path that is is definitely not the, <laughs> the prescribed route, like I say. <laughs> um, but no, that's that's wicked. And uh, Dolphy, were you kind of in the same boat or was it a, um, was it just Will kind of, uh, was an application to grant for the web that kind of brought you in? Um, well, definitely the grant for the web has got me rooted deep now into crypto and I'm more excited about it and more interested in looking to buy some uh, coins myself. Um, but I, I do have like high level understanding of blockchain and cryptocurrencies because I worked for several companies in the past that uh, dealt with startups doing crypto. So I, it was an exciting opportunity to jump in this project as well. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so immerse face. You, you're saying you kind of have your own node. I don't know why, but when when I picture that, I'm I'm picturing someone basically builds a room that they can mm -hmm. showcase their content in, and the web monetization ties in when you say you land in that room and you can maybe see uh, bits if you don't if you have the if you can see it if you have the web monetization plug uh, coil plug in to allow that. Um, that's how I just pick, Im immediately jumped to picture in it, like a gallery of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much exactly it. Like you have a space now, it's a virtual space that people can visit from anywhere, but it's represented in, in three dimensions like a space and you can invite people to join you in there and hang out. Uh, and how we're integrating web monetization, uh, you know, it is, uh, it takes quite a bit of tech to run a virtual space on the web uh, and it has some hosting costs associated with it and so yep. we want people to be able to make interesting immersive web content and have that be financially sustain sustainable for them yeah uh, and uh, so we're looking we're experimenting with a bunch of different freemium type models to see what fits best with immersive web content uh, one of the first most obvious ones is the capacity of the room uh, so, you know, if you're the host of this space, uh, you define what the virtual space looks like, but then when people visit, they can be partitioned off into different like clones of it. Uh, that's just them and their friends, even though the space okay, looks yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily just like a royale with strangers that, that you're interacting with. Uh, and uh, there's costs, you know, there's direct costs with um, 
how many people are on there at once is going to cost you more in server costs. So one of the things we're experimenting with is we we'll put a cap on the number of people that can be in a room together, and that cap increases based on the number of people that are contributing with web monetization. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, you know, a really well-established model for freemium content in 3D and gaming spaces is like personalization, uh, you know, like hats and, and stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing the kids do in Fortnite these days. <laughs> But uh, and so we're looking at, um, you know, if you create a space, you can also create some custom avatars that are only available at your space uh, and you can make those locked so that uh, someone has to be coming there as a paying web monetized customer in order to unlock them. They can then get that avatar and add it to their inventory permanently. And then when they go to other spaces in the immersive web, they can use your avatar uh, anywhere they go. Okay, which they, yeah. You, if you created a cool avatar, that's advertising for you. It's people are like, hey, what's that avatar? Where did you get it? And you yeah, say, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I got, it. got it back over at uh, at vrain.space. You just had to sign up for Coil, and you can get the avatar. Yeah. Okay. Oh, nice. And yeah. that's something that's really fun for for me because I I love making digital humans. So when <laughs> <laughs> when Will asked me to to jump on this because we're going to be making avatars and rooms, uh, it was an exciting prospect. Um, for yeah, me. yeah. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what's kind of like the grand vision for this? Because in my mind, I've got like RuneScape in my head, but you, you're kind of <laughs> running around as a, a 3D avatar, like jumping in and out of people's spaces. But maybe that's probably a bit down the line. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that is where we're going. Uh, you know, we like, we'll have a platform. It's all open source. You could uh, deploy it and have a space that's all yours and customize it. And people could run and jump in and out with their avatars and hang out. Uh, we'd really like to see uh, more creativity. You know, a lot of this is inspired by the early web, the web 1.0 days, when before we were all on these rigid platforms that told us you have to communicate in 240 characters and, and such. But there's a lot more creativity where people would just make a website in HTML just to see what they could do. Uh, and so the, the web was more adventurous and more creativity and we're inspired by that. We want to bring it back. So we'd love to see people creating experiments and experiences and games and art installations using this platform so that every every immersive space you go to is a different and unique experience. Huh. And, and I'd like to uh, uh, illustrate the difference between what we're doing and what maybe Facebook Horizons is doing. Um, we, we have the same kind of uh, motto as Horizons where we want people to come in and experiment and create and create spaces and invite friends and do all those wonderful things and interact. Um, but we want to have them paid for those things as well. And we want them to feel like they have agency over the spaces that they're creating. Mm. Um, and, and it's open and anybody can come in and do this. Where Facebook Horizon, it's velvet roped. You have to be invited in. Um, when you do go in, you're not given your own home per se, but you're prompted to start creating worlds and start creating. Um, and people are creating and they're creating these amazing interactive spaces in Horizon, but it's all under the umbrella of Facebook. Yeah. They're not getting paid for it. And at any time, Facebook could kick that person out and now all their creations are in this world that they no longer have access to. Yeah. Um, and, and that's something we don't <laughs> want uh, uh, to encourage, encourage or, or Put out there in the world, you know. Um, Facebook Facebook likes to uh, give their tool give tool sets to their creators and make them feel like they have agency over their creations. When in reality, they really don't. Um, Facebook can take them away at any time. Can deem it not appropriate anymore. Um, take away all their views and all their follows. And um, and I don't think that's really fair for creators. I feel like. What Will um, started with Emmers and um, invited Kalani Quinn and I to join the team to push it even further. I, I see so much opportunity here. I see an amazing uh, realm of possibility for anybody who wants to have an immersive space and, and uh, do a crazy cool things online. Yeah, so, oh, it sounds yeah. like a really promising vision of the future. Like you say, like Facebook the Googles, YouTubes <laughs> of the world have so much power over everything at the moment. And I mean, it's not, it, well, it's not just this industry. Uh, the, before we jumped on, we were talking about like Robin Hood and <laughs> all, all the GameStop stuff kicking off. Um, 
yeah i, I just think yeah, it's a we're, we're it's for a, the little guy we want the little guy to you know make it like you know we're the little guy we want to we want to you know support people and their initiatives and what they want to do and not stifle people and it seems like the big hedge funds and the big corporations and even facebook funneling all the arvr through their platform where other arvr platforms feel like they don't have any you know any ability to compete in the space anymore so they fold or they pivot or they you know drop the project completely and and that's really sad that's been breaking my heart i've been seeing a lot of startups and companies just dropping their ar um uh, departments and pivoting completely yeah. into other places and um facebook just getting bigger and bigger in that space so yeah uh i love what will is doing and i'm i'm a 100 a champion of of uh Emmer space yeah. yeah that's a core motivation that i don't know if we went into in the right way but you know we talk about the immersive web, which is these like rich 3D experiences that are on the internet and you can go to them on a desktop or on the phone, like a video game, or if you've got the virtual reality or augmented reality equipment, you can like go inside of them and really experience them. Yeah. Uh, and, and this seems to be the future of the web. Like yeah. uh, I see it as like a tran transformational change in the web, the same way that social media was. It's like web three is going to be these immersive web experiences. Uh, but the problem is that people who are the giants in the social media era, like Facebook, are already making big plays to be in control of the next generation the same way they are as this one. Uh, like Facebook years ago bought one of the two main hardware manufacturers for virtual reality, Oculus. Um, yep. uh, and so our goal here is to get ahead of the game for this next generation of the web and give it a different model that's not uh, you know, another toxic ad selling, addictive attention gathering platform, but is something uh, that brings people together. Uh, it's uh, you know, not locking people into platforms, but breaking down the walls between platforms with the open standards and decentralization, uh, not uh, extracting profit sales or profit from store sales from creators, but instead by like, giving creators the ability to earn their own money. Um, not hoarding user data, but giving it back to the control of the people who are on these platforms. One of the cool things about a decentralized network that's a bunch of different nodes is you, as someone who wants to be in the network, have a bunch of choice about where you're going to put your information. And you can do one like social.coop, which is cooperatively owned, and you have the ownership and democratic control over your data. Uh, or you can do one of a million different options that's going to suit how you want your data to be respected. Uh, yeah. And then, and finally, you know, we're not concentrating power in a corporate dictatorship. Uh, we are, have a plan to distribute the control of this next generation of the internet by also offering a democratic collective governance for inner space itself, so that both content creators and consumers have the option to buy in as co-op members and get voting rights over what we're doing at the high level with the technology and the standards. Yes. No, I think it's the way it has to go. Um, yeah. There's so many privacy com focused companies uh, mix that with the, the way I see it going by 2030. I think the biggest companies in the world will be gaming, blockchain integrated, but they they will have a core of privacy because I, I think it's so important to the end users now that they re they've suddenly woken up and kind of gone, okay, there, there is a serious amount of cash in your data. Like people should start getting rewarded for that or at least at the very least have control over that and there's so many i think there's such a huge push now to get the internet back to where it was in like version 1.0 of the internet where it was decentralized and we've kind of gone to 2.0 where it's all kind of siloed and feudal and now we're kind of coming back out of that into 3.0 we're also seeing uh the big giants kind of uh fight and eat themselves. Um, Facebook and Apple right now are going to go toe to toe over privacy and overreach yep. when it comes to offline activity. So, you know, that's going to play out pretty interesting as well. And honestly, let the giants beat themselves up and, you know, <laughs> crash and we can pick up the pieces and actually make like Will said, make something that's worthwhile and for the people. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I think that's a uh really cool guys um it, it sounds like an amazing project i'll uh i'll drop the links and stuff but if it, is there anything you kind of like to point people at where they can find out more information while we're kind of on here um won't be the best place to get more info and stuff 
Yeah, the home space homepage for our project is immers dot space i m m e r s dot space, yep. and you can sign up for the mailing list uh, and get involved with early betas. I think we totally forgot to talk about uh, the chess game. So part of yeah. our, our, our <laughs> chess game uh, is the is, best part. <laughs> yeah, oh well, yes. <laughs> so our project for grant for the web is uh, building out this core technology, but at the same time, like a proof of concept of what could an immersive space, a custom experience, be. Uh, and so we're building a immersive chess game where you go into these amazing 3D worlds. And actually, I should let Dulce talk about it. She is our artistic director. Oh, well, I mean, you were doing a good job. But yes, I, I mean, I can say it quickly. I, I made custom spaces to really highlight the ability of playing chess. So I wanted to make these like giant chess pieces or uh, act animated chess pieces. So right now I'm actually um, working on animating the chess pieces for our Alice in Wonderland room. Um, I had plain chess pieces in there before, but now I'm actually going to have little characters, like real people, characters okay. that you'll, you'll I was, was going to ask whether it was like the Harry Potter thing, it'll, but I remember it'll that. It'll be in... <laughs> very Harry Potter in the Alice in Wonderland room. Yes, it will be. Um, and, you know, we'll have Easter eggs in there, like Will mentioned earlier. We'll have uh, um, a lot of um, discoverability in the space. So I make these big maps that you can wander around and get lost in and um, and actually be social in and find things and discover little little nooks and crannies. So mm. it's not just the chess game. It's it's inviting uh, groups of people to come and play chess, engage, be social, find Easter eggs, um, you know, participate in monetization and uh, you know, they're just these fantastical spaces. So I, I really had a lot of fun making them. And yeah. I felt very honored at being asked by Will to create these spaces. So when he asked me, I was like, it's on. I'm going to make them. I'm going to do it. <laughs> um, and I still owe some more spaces to him. And I'm totally excited to create them. You know, I'm like itching to make them. And um, But I'm working on some client work right now. So that's been kind of sidelining me. But I jumped back in with creating these animated pieces. So, you know, the chess rooms are going to be these crazy, fantastical spaces that you're going to just have a lot of fun in. So, um, yeah, you need to check them out. Okay. And we can get to that through Immerse.Space still. That's the best place. Cool. Yes, right. yes, that one. So so we actually have, because we want to show like the decentralized network. So Emirates.space has one node, which is right. a, a place where you can uh, decorate your uh, metaverse apartment. And then the chess game is running on a separate one, which is at vrain.space, like virtual rain. So V-R-E-I-N. Okay. Yeah, rain. yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll link it all mm. in the show notes so that <laughs> people can get, get a hold of yeah. it. Yeah. No, that sounds great. Sounds... We, we have one space that you can, I think you can uh, create a room with right now and play, but it's an alpha. So if you do check it out, just understand that we're still alpha at the moment. Um, it's playable. It's fun. But yeah, there's still like UI stuff that we need to incorporate. And, and yeah. Okay. No. No, that sounds amazing. And uh, yeah, it'll be, I think it's, it sounds like an exciting projects and I, I can't wait to see what, what the end of the, like the six month grant we have and where you guys get to it and would we'll definitely be following along. Um, yeah, so I think wrapping up, I think that is kind of it for today. Uh, thanks to all the listeners for tuning in. Um, thanks to Will and Dulce. Uh, been really interesting having you here. And um, yeah, like I said, I'm really excited to see where you guys go. I think it's 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 a massive space and growing. <laughs> and I think you're you're right the right time to get in in it into it. Um, so yeah. Thank you so much, Greg. Thank you, Thank you for having us. <laughs> yeah, no worries. So uh, yeah, that's all for today. Thank you for tuning in uh, to Just a Meme, where we talk about the future of making money on the web. Uh, please do get involved. Give us a like, send some comments and a review, and please also subscribe uh, to check out the next session and uh, spread the words with your friends. So uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks, guys.